Football fans, Gladiator family, this is In the End Zone with the Duke City Gladiators. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to our seven part series about all things concerning DCG. We are here inside the amazing and family friendly Electric Playhouse. Located on Coors and I-40 here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And in the next 30 minutes, we will get those of you who are not familiar, familiar with everything concerning the Duke City Gladiators. We will be bringing into the Octagon some special guests to help go through some of those wonderful moments of the 2018 championship run and relive some in-depth big moments from the 2018 championship season. But before we get into our back-to-back -back championship run, let's first get you caught up on the history of the Gladiators. Here is the rise of your Duke City Gladiators. I'm joined here by General Manager Matt Kayward of the Duke City Gladiators. If you're not recognized what that is, that is the brand new professional indoor football team that'll be playing at Tingley Coliseum. Matt, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, there's a lot of exciting things as you can imagine going on with that. Many teams have come and many have folded. The Duke City Gladiators believe their business model will help them succeed. It's a tough market, there's no doubt about it. Uh, what's going to be different is our model is going to be much different. Someday, someday. professional this is a professional league Pro, here yes. you know I, I know a lot of people they think oh if it's not you know Dallas Cowboys I have to say that that's my team <laughs> um, then you know you're not professional but you guys are go through the recruitment you guys go through training just yeah, to get here yes. right it's a little bit different from regular football yeah, yeah. and it's a lot faster paced <laughs> and there's a yeah. lot more running like in, in you know in hundred yard outdoor football games yeah. like here, oh here's a video right here of how the how the plays go yeah. down but you know in a hundred yard game yeah, you, you pause, you wait, you, you know, everybody stages, you, you kind of have a thing, right? Yeah. In these games, it's play after play mm -hmm. after play. I mean, lot, how does yeah. that, like... Very, very fast pace. Is, is, that, is that more fun to play, I'd imagine? The team already has a coach in Dominic Bromante, who just recently coached the folded New Mexico Stars. We will provide a winner for the, you know, for this landscape. And, you know, they say everybody likes a winner, so we'll find out. This indoor team looks to excite their fan base while serving the community through charitable service and empowering youth through athletics. So we're here to that third season now, and uh, our focus is all about family affordable entertainment. What is your favorite thing about playing for the Gladiators? Man, I get to be a kid, man. It's like being a big kids out here, man. The most exciting thing for me is just the competition and the opportunity. I love it out here. People have to play for Gladiators, you know who I'm repping. I should do Family friendly, family yeah. affordable, on a budget you can still come and enjoy, yeah. and and the kids get to be, meet the players, yeah. get autographs from players, get a, you know an incredible experience. That's fantastic, guys. Well, for yeah. more information on your Duke City Gladiators, to get tickets, get season tickets, whatever it is, head over to Casa.com. We will have all the links there. Guys, sounds like so much fun. I'll definitely yeah. be out at one of the games. We'd love to see you guys. Absolutely.
Pofall and the Pofall team at Guild Mortgage, serving New Mexico families since 1988. Contact us at 505-261-8888 to start the home buying process. In the End Zone with the Duke City Gladiators is brought to you by Roadrunner Realty and Investments. You can contact Teresa Padilla at 505-639-5961 or 505-804-3237. Local UA 412, United Association of Journeymen and Apprentices of the Plumbers, Pipe Fitters, Welders, and Service Tech Industries. Here to help our members build a better life for themselves and their families. If you would like more information on the local UA 412 or like to be a part of our apprentice program where you earn while you learn, please visit UALocal412.org. That brings us to the 2018 championship season. And to help us navigate through that amazing championship run, I want to first introduce head coach and offensive mastermind for the Duke City Gladiators, who was in 2018 offensive coordinator for the Duke City Gladiators, Head coach, Martino Theus. Now introducing to the round table in 2018, he was our vocal leader for the Duke City Gladiators defense, ball hawking safety, but now assistant coach and defensive coordinator. Please welcome Fred Griggs. In 2018 season, he was the center of our offense, literally as our team center. Now joining the coaching staff as offensive line coach, please welcome Coach Sherman Carter. In 2018, Fatu was the team's defensive wall and one man wrecking crew. In the 2021 season, he will be joining our coaching staff as a defensive line coach. Please welcome Coach Fatu. Next to the round table in 2018, he was everywhere for this coaching staff, whatever we needed. But this year for the 2021 season, he will be joining the coaching staff as a special teams coordinator. Please welcome Coach Anthony Sato. Now next coach to the, to the round table in 2018, he was around the team and around the organization and has tons of experience for the indoor game of football and will be joining our coaching staff as a running backs coach. Please welcome Coach Ray Woods. And last but not least, I want to bring to the round table our Director of Player Personnel and the right hand man behind all things concerning DCG. Please welcome Matt Avila. All right, thank you all you gentlemen for joining us. Let's just dive right into it. So first off, first question, what were some of you guys' involvement with the Duke City Gladiators or thoughts of the Duke City Gladiators if you weren't directly involved with the team prior or leading up to the 2018 season? 2018 season, I actually was with, uh, I came in as offensive coordinator, assistant head coach under Coach Monte. Actually, it was, it was a really exciting off season, really. I got the phone call. I actually was prior to, I was in Mexico, Monterey, Mexico, coaching the NAL. Okay. And so I got the phone call and said, hey, let's make a championship run. And he guaranteed a championship and made a run after it. I mean, it, it, it is what it was. I mean, it came, came to fruition. Came out perfect. My story is a little bit different than the rest of these guys. You know, they've uh, been a part of the organization directly, um, where, you know, in 2017, when they were the stars and playing out in uh, Santa Ana, um, I was actually in the stands with my family, you know, having my kids in there, you know, watching some football. Um, I previously coached uh, college ball, so, you know, having the opportunity to have some football uh, locally, you know, here in Albuquerque was, you know, amazing, so I definitely wanted to support, so I was one of the few uh, heads in the stands back then. Now we're just going to jump straight into the first game. First game, you're on the road at Dallas. It was a tough game against the Rebs. They had a great team, great staff. What was it like going into that first game? Uh, I mean, we knew we, what we was faced up against. You know, they was coming off the championship season. And then, so we knew we had to give it our all to kind of go in. And once we actually went in that game, we knew the mentality and we knew the standards that we had built for that season coming along. 
So we just built off that and kept it rolling. All right, so following game one, you guys go back home to Tinga Coliseum for five games in a row. Matt, what was it like coming home to Tinga Coliseum, five straight games, you got to fill the stands, you got to get all the, the, the information out, you got to market, you got to get everything ready for the, for just on the, the business aspect of it. Not to mention these guys getting ready to perform in front of their home crowd for the first time for 2018. You know, that, that home stance of those five straight games, that is, that's personally big for me because that's where I, yes, I got to put in a lot of work, but that's five weeks straight that I got to show, hey, football team, coaching staff, everything, I got your back. You know, I need to put this in and I need to fill up those stands there for you guys. At home, we didn't let anybody beat us. We, we took that to heart. Nobody's coming in our house to, to whoop us. No, it's not happening. You got to defend the Coliseum house. at all costs, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Coach Tino, we just came coming off of a five game home stretch. We just talked about the five game home stretch. Now you're on the road, four games in a row. What was it like going on the road? What was the defining game or defining play where you thought, hey, this team has what it takes to win or get to a championship? Yeah. I can actually go back to a defining play yeah. that I know. Actually, it was the onside kick against Wichita. That really defined pretty much our season right there. And the one-handed grab from Jared Elmore. Really, that, that really defined our championship run going into that playoff stretch yeah. right there. What, was, what were the circumstances of the onside kick? Were you guys down and needed that onside kick yeah, to win it? We, we were down and we needed, that, we needed the onside kick. And after we got the onside kick, we recovered the onside kick. Actually, our offense got back on the field and Caleb, Caleb Holbrook, he threw a pass to Jared Elmore. One-handed. One touchdown. That really defined our whole championship run right there. What, what better way to win a game than a Sports Center top 10 one-handed catch right it there? It should have been on top 10. <laughs> it should have been on top 10. So you make it out of that four-game stretch, back home, you finish three and one. Now you're getting ready to head into the playoffs for your first playoff run into a championship. First up is Wichita. What are you thinking going into that game? What's the game plan? What do you want to get accomplished? And did you get accomplished what you wanted to get accomplished in that game against Wichita for your first playoff game? Actually, you know, we, us playing at home that first home game, and by winning that first home game, we knew we was going to have a home stretch. So that really made us go even more hard to win that game. Now, a Pacific play out of that, was actually was a was a force fumble, yeah. a, a recovery fumble that we had. Who forced it? it was it he forced it? Okay. Briggs actually, Coach Briggs actually forced a fumble and recovered it as well. Um, yeah, we was it was the third quarter. We was down by nine points, and they was going to break our backs and score one more time, and then go up by two two. Oh, they was already up two possessions, yeah. but but go up three whole possessions, and they gave the ball to some really big dude. And he ended up. Holding the ball a little bit too low, I put my helmet on the ball and we got the lead. Well, we got the ball back and two possessions later we had the lead. But that game versus Wichita, like I said, uh, we, we was down pretty much the whole game. We had to fight back in that game and nobody on our team act like we was going to lose that game. Even even when we came down to another onside kick we needed to win the game, everybody knew we was going to get it. And after that game, it was really hard to get us down as a team for the yeah. rest of the season. It Sounds was, like you guys were, a lot, were able to come out of a lot of close games which shows the resilience and never die attitude from your team, man. If you're, you get down early, you get down late, and you don't give up and you're able to come back from, for a victory, man, that shows a lot about the team. And that's one thing uh, about the 2018 season in general, we were known for defense. Defense was our strong point, they were our backbone, and whatever they did, we, we piggybacked off of on offense. So if they got a stop, it gave us the motivation that, oh yeah, it's time for us to go ball out because they, did, they gave us this, and now we gotta give them back what they gave us, you know what I mean? Sorry to interrupt you viewers at home. Here's a quick word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Football returns in action March 2021 with our back-to-back -back champions, the Duke City Gladiators. Professional football action for the entire family. Gladiator! Gladiator! Bay Equity Field at Tingley Coliseum with tailgating, music, entertainment, and high octane championship football. Follow us online for more info and dates. 
the Duke City Gladiators, New Mexico's only professional sports team, creating community champions, vision and focus. Duke City Gladiators. You guys made it through the playoffs, you're in the championship. Was the championship at home? Championship was at home, correct? What is it like playing a championship game, first time, first time in a championship, at home, Tingley Coliseum? Probably if you're playing football, if you're playing any championship game, um, you got a lot of nerves, you got a lot of thoughts going before the game, but once you get into your facility, I mean, it gives you another layer of relaxation that you wouldn't even imagine. I mean, like, I went from sleeping in a hotel room the night before the game, talking to a guy that played for the other team, telling him, yeah, we're gonna beat y'all butts, to literally walking into our hotel, I mean, walking into our stadium, put my arm around a guy like, hey man, I'm sorry, because I know now it's really gonna happen. Like, it's, it's, it's just way different. You, you have a, a certain standard that you have to play for, and you know what's all on the line in that championship game. It's almost a, I can't let these people down kind of mentality, and I felt that throughout the whole team, man. It, I don't, I didn't feel like that game was close emotionally for us yeah. after after it started. So it was a big help being home, if you ask me. Yeah. At first, it was like I can't believe we're here, you know, because like I said, 2016 we were trash. Um, but 2018 we were family. <laughs> like you know, not one individual on other teams could be what we had as a team. Mm -hmm. So um, going into the championship game, there was already a lot of hype on social media. Their, their players, their fans were already running their mouths, you know, so I'm talking to Brett and Matt Moss, hey, we gotta go. We gotta go, especially our defense, you know. Uh, me personally, I hate when teams run on us, and that's what they were known for. So all week we were getting ready. Ain't no, they ain't getting nothing on us. So it was already set, you know what I mean? It was up to our DBs to stop the pass. Like, we knew we were gonna take this run. So at the end of the game, we won. That's what it was. Exactly. Costino, you guys in a championship game. What play did you, do you remember where you thought we're gonna win this game? Like, we're actually gonna win the 2018 championship game. Once again, another fumble occurred. The fumble that occurred actually changed the whole momentum of the game. You know, granted to do, we had to make halftime adjustments, but we already knew. I mean, we didn't know, but as a coaching staff, we saw the players, how hungry they was to actually go out and win a championship. The only thing we did was the coaching staff. We, we made our adjustments, but the players made their own adjustments as well. So when we walked in at halftime and saw that, we're like, there's no reason to even talk to you guys. The second half, we got it. Yeah. The momentum was already set by that fumble going into the third quarter and we knew right then and there the game was out. That's it. And a prolific catch by Sid was it was Sid. Sid. Cedric made another Cedric great Jones. catch. On a prolific catch on the bottom of the field goal. Bottom of the field goal. Snatched on top of the dude's head. What? what? Take the lead. Yeah. Cedric's known <laughs> Cedric's known for great catches. The guy got most. <laughs> you, know, you got a, a sports center catch and then you got a Randy Moss, you got Moss catch. That whole game, it was so close. And then when the boys were walking back onto the field, I was standing next to the gate for the end zone and Coach T walked up. And, you know, he's a, he's a man of uh, short words, you know, but quick words. And, and what he did tell me is he goes, we got this. And he gave me a fist bump and he walked in and I felt, I felt it right, right, right in my chest. The heart like, attack? We got this. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll never forget is our running back, not a lot of everybody know, but our running back went out that game, you know? So he, he had a concussion that game. And, uh, you know, one man that stepped up to the plate right here was Fatu, too, you, you know? I'll never forget that last play, right? Uh, <laughs> he slipped and fell on the on the last play of the game, and all we had to do was get a yard. And, oh, you and you were running back. He was running back, yeah. Yeah. And hey, you Locked got the ball on the last play and slipped and fell. Slipped. Yeah, it was. And, and, and when when we got that extra yard, you know that's that's able for the clock to to keep going. Yeah. And and it just realized and it hit us. We won this thing. And I'll never forget, I was holding this cannon actually with a bunch of confetti and I just hit it off. And then the crowd just went nuts. And, and the clock was still rolling actually at the point. But it was amazing to see and, and it just felt so good, you know, to, to see that these guys, they, they brought a championship to Albuquerque. Duke City family, every week we'll be showcasing some of the amazing talent we have on our roster. This week, 
we have 2018 Defensive Player of the Year, linebacker Jason Serter, and starting quarterback, Nate Davis. Check it out. My name is Jason Serta. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm linebacker for uh, Duke City Gladiators. I've been playing for the Gladiators since the first year, 2015. I'm the only player that's been on there uh, this long. Let's get it. I never used this one. I seen it on a video. And I'm about that life. I didn't uh, get any looks after college, even though like I was all conference and I thought I played really well. I was uh, only 20 years old and uh, I needed a place to play. You know, I thought I still had a lot of football left in me. I heard about uh, arena football. All of a sudden, uh, there's a team started at the Duke City Gladiators. Let me move right here. Right here, hey. My guy, Ellis. Hey. In 2018, we ended up, we won the whole championship, the whole CIF. I got a uh, 2018 defensive MVP. Uh, I was defense player of the whole league. Like 2019 comes around and uh, the only thing on our mind was just to repeat again. Like every time I was in the weight room, every time I was working out, it was just repeat, repeat. Let's see if we could uh, win again. So uh, 2019 came and uh, we actually, we had a hard season, but we ended up, we, re we won it all again and we repeated back-to-back -back championships. Hey, Kurt, man, let's hop on the two-down machine, man. Work on that back. Get it. Just out here getting some nice balls in with uh, Nate Davis, quarterback of the Niners. So, uh, man, I got to come out here and see that spiral, get some looks anytime I can, man. It's always good to throw with him. He's been at the highest level. I'm trying to reach the highest level. Try to get catch everything that hits the ground, it motivates me. You know, I should catch everything. I don't care where it's at. Just trying out here, get this working. Right when COVID's over, it's time, it's time to go to, it's time to get it. No more playing games. So every day, my goal is make every day count. From now on, every day, gotta improve. If you don't, you're gonna lose it. You gotta keep grinding every day. That's all I'm trying to do. That's what we do, man. You know what I'm saying? Just get big. We got the vet right here. MVP. You the MVP. MVP, offense, defense, all around. 3P right here, baby. Shy MJ. We're going for three. That's right, boy. That's right, baby. Hey. Hell yeah, boy. That's what we're here for, man. I'm just excited to get after it and uh, straight give it my all and uh, bring another ring back to Albuquerque. Let's get it. My name is Nate Davis. I'm from Bolero, Ohio, quarterback of the Duke City Gladiators. I got a scholarship for football to go to Ball State University. Played there for three years, started all three years. Then entered the draft as a junior. Got drafted to the San Francisco 49ers. Played there for three years. Nate Davis, San Francisco 49ers, quarterback, number seven. Congratulations, big NFL, you know, a little you. jump from uh, Ball State. <laughs> yes, it's a big jump. Then start playing arena football for Amarillo, Texas. I played there for eight years, rival against Duke City. Eight years, I've been going against them. Now, I done joined the family. All IFL teams, we coming. Best believe that. We preparing right now. It's the off season. March, here we come. There was a culture here, a family culture. No matter what, they stuck together. Win, loss, didn't matter. They stuck together through the rough times. And then what that brought was champions. We just out here just tossing, tossing the football, man. You know, just talking about life. 
uh, you know, talking about his coaching, you know, all, with this pandemic going on, he just started practice. You know, while while him working out, you know, just talking, just catching up, man. You know, that, that's what teammates about. You know, so you got to be very focused. Got to be some very mental mental things for a quarterback, and that's a challenge for me, and that's what I love. So I expect this the best. I expect us to win the championship. For five years, we have called Albuquerque home, our home. It has shaped our character, made us who we are. You have taught us about toughness, inspired us to work hard, given us a reason to go after our goals how to persevere when times are rough. Albuquerque, you have shown us how to give back, how to give everything to our community, invest in our future, create community champions. As we move forward, we look to make you proud. We wear our state on our sleeve. We are New Mexico. We are Albuquerque. We are your community champions. Professional football champions. We are Duke City Gladiators. Well, man, that sounds like an unbelievable season, uh, especially the adversity you guys faced previous seasons. It sounds like an outstanding season. Finish out with a championship. And, you know, it's nothing better than that. You guys got the rings here to show them up. You can go ahead and flash the rings to the cameras. Look at those things. That concludes our first episode of In the End Zone with the Duke City Gladiators. I want to thank you guys for coming up, talking about the 2018 championship season. Sounds like an incredible season. Thank all our viewers for tuning in at home. Tune in next Sunday where we'll talk about the 2019, their back-to-back -back championship season. And we'll bring these guys back on and discuss some memorable moments from then.